Well, I gave Dagny the choice today whether she wanted to go to Goodwill or she wanted to go to the most magical antique mall shop in all the land, and she chose the antique shop that we were at last week, and I spent $800 and got some really amazing stuff. So, I drove an hour and a half, which really actually was an hour and 45 minutes because I had to stop for coffee. And we are here now, and we're going to go in and look at the treasures and see what we missed because I know that we missed a lot. We did, and there was stuff I left behind even. So we're gonna head in. I, I'm not gonna put this into three parts, but maybe two parts. We'll see. We'll maybe see what we're parts. Maybe four <laughs> parts today. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that to you. But let's head in and see what we can find. That we can flip for a profit. Here we go. Today we started immediately inside the door, and I spotted this carved little shorebird made from driftwood, and it was signed on the bottom. So I decided that I was going to make this my very first item of the day. From there, I decided to look through some of the little items on the shelf. All of these items are one for $4 or two for seven. And I love browsing through these shelves because there's always great deals to be found. I figured this out the last time I was here. So I wanted to take a little bit of a closer look at some of the shelves that I kind of neglected the last time. And then I spotted the artwork and I wondered, you know what? I wonder if there's any more alien toaster paintings. And so I decided to look a little bit closer at the artwork. There were some interesting pieces there. However, I did not see any alien toasters. That one I liked. I thought that one was fun, but it just wasn't fun enough. Now around the corner, I did get right back into the artwork and I liked this one. However, I suspect that it was a print. I just loved the features of her face. Now this one appeared to be alien related, maybe. I don't know, it kind of looked like a spaceship in the sky and I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but it was curious. It was not cartoony enough for me to appreciate it though. I guess I'm kind of on a cartoony kick as far as artwork goes. These were interesting. So I decided to pull them out. They are made of wood cutouts and then they are painted. And there were actually two of them. One was a market scene and the other was a general store and post office. And they were really nicely made. I thought they were interesting the way they were all pieced together and then painted. And I was surprised that there were no signatures on them, but I decided to pick those up. And that was really it for the artwork. I probably could have spent a little bit more time looking through it, but I'll be back again and I'm sure I'll spend a little bit more time looking through the artwork. Now I ventured towards the back of the store as I mentioned earlier, majority of these shelves are one for four or two for seven. Those were nice little tiles there. And I liked this rickshaw figurine. There were a lot of tools and bottles on that shelf there. And I decided to head on back towards the ceramics and the potteries and the stuff that I'm more drawn to. And look, there's a barrel mug. <laughs> I had picked up two barrel mugs here the last time I visited and now I'm finding even more barrel mugs. However, I did decide to pass on them this time. I liked the way these dishes were painted, but the bottom was just a little too clean for my liking. I thought maybe they weren't as old as they looked. This ice bucket. This ice bucket looked like it could possibly be made in Finland. Not positive about that, but for only $4, I was willing to take a shot on it and figure it out later. And even if it's not made in Finland, I feel like $4 is a good investment on that piece because it was really neat. There were a ton of precious moments on the shelves. As you can see here, there's some clothes that I just kind of breeze through. <laughs> 
I apologize to all of you who love the clothes. Now this cat figurine, I did not notice this the last time, or maybe I did and I just didn't look very closely at it, but I loved the bright colors. You, you can tell my conures are very excited today. Dagny found this gobel seagull, and unfortunately there was a repair on it because it was really neat. Now towards this front room, is where I found the Royal Hager vase the last time I was here. I decided to look at the purses because I neglected those the last time. I wanted to get a closer look, see if maybe there was a telephone cord purse just hanging out. There was not. And then I found the doll. And you guys know I don't typically pick up dolls. It's just a preference of mine. I tend to avoid them. Um, I know doll buyers are very particular and they scare me a little bit. Um, but this doll was just so nicely made. I just loved her features. And to be honest, I think she kind of reminded me a little bit of Juliet whenever Juliet was a baby. So I did buy the doll and I think the doll was $12. There's some Fenton sitting there on the shelf for $12, and the last time I did pass on this bowl, but this time I snatch it up with my pinky, and for all of you who are concerned, I have yet to break anything. So I've got that pinky down, down, that pinky hold, I've got it. We're good. Nothing broke. I was joking with Dagny that everyone thinks this is going to be a setup, but in the very back behind Maggie's tush was this this awesome Mexican folk art piece. I believe it's a Mexican folk art piece. It's possible it's just South American, but I loved the colors of it. It's so cheerful. That's part of the reason I think I'm drawn to these South American pieces is just because they're so cheerful and so happy. Dagny found a pig. <laughs> a very cute little pig. I believe it was made in Ireland. You can see I'm back to the art glass. I've been drawn to it. It's speaking to me. I liked that paperweight, but it did have a cloudy bottom, and so that scared me off just a little bit. But these paperweights were really nice, and so was that. And also the Jack in the Pulpit vase. But the paperweights had a Millefiore design, and when you turn them over, you can see that the bottom is polished clear. They're very nice. They're $9 a piece. Uh, now Dagny and I both agreed that I would buy one and she would buy one. So I decided to buy the blue one and she bought the yellow one and that will be available in her eBay shop, which is linked down below in the description under shop with our friends. Now we both noticed this plate at the same time. And so we played a game. Guess where it's made? I said England. And when she turned it over, it did have an English mark on the back, so I felt like I won that game. Um, I really liked the colors of this plate. I loved that orange. It was like a tangerine orange, and so I said, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that for $12. I like that. Um, and so I did end up buying this because of the colors. Now in the back, there was a really nice perfume bottle. It was etched and it had this optic texture to it. Unfortunately, it was missing its atomizer, but my understanding is that those are pretty easy to replace. So it wasn't the end of the world, but it was just an absolutely beautiful piece of glass. Now, while I was scanning over the shelves here, I noticed that the turnips were still here. And I was so thrilled because I thought for sure someone would come in and scoop these up and they would be gone forever. And I was really kicking myself the last time because I left the turnips behind. Um, I'm still really not sure what they are, what their purpose is. I wasn't sure if they were candlesticks or not, but I thought they were really cool. Now I've spotted this really neat vase back here. It's very mid-century modern, but as I'm checking this out, Dagny says something behind me, and I turn around, and I just about died. Oh my god. That is. Oh my god. 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 Oh my
Oh my god. <laughs> and it's signed. Oh my god. I've always wanted to find one of those. Did you? Yeah. Here, I'll put that on shelf. <laughs> that is like, look over there. That is like one of the items on my, like... That is you cut my part out. Oh no! Oh, Dad, you look what I found. No. <laughs> oh my God! You don't want nice it. To see you. Such a long time I like. I feel like my heart is fluttering right now. You are a little shaky right now. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> this may be the start to my Murano collection. Uh oh. Oh my God. It's 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 Murano. We will call it the Asian scholar to avoid any controversy, but I love this piece. I love the aesthetics of it, and I see them posted from time to time in the Murano group, and I have always wanted one, and I told myself that if I ever found one, this would be the one piece of Murano that I would keep because I flip pretty much all of my Murano, um, so I was very thrilled with that. Thank you, Dagny. Thank you. Now I did move on to check out some of the jewelry and in this jewelry case you can see there is a very neat Millefiore ring and I had to, the case was not locked so I could lift it right up and, and pull that little guy out of there to take a, a better look at it. And I really liked it. It matched a necklace that I purchased recently at Bedford Street Antiques and even though it's just a costume jewelry piece it's not a fine metal but I really liked it and I thought it would go well with the necklace there's a little cloisonne crane back here or maybe it's not a crane it's a bird maybe it's an emu <laughs> it was $14 I love cloisonne pieces I'm not sure why especially when they're figurines so I did decide to grab that and stick that in my pile as well there was a cat, and this cat was here the last time. I decided to take a closer look at it this time. You can see the bottom is cloudy, and I kind of assumed that the last time without actually picking it up, and um, so I stuck that back there. I was really nervous about this. This was making me real nervous, but there was no other place to really stick that, and so I just kind of scooted it in as best I could. We've got the butterfly plate there. That thousand butterfly plate is worth quite a a good bit of money but I just didn't feel like pulling it out but you've got some Delphite blue here and also the clown and then this this here is the clown that has to pee I'm pretty sure that's what the name of this sculpture is um, if it's not it's probably what it should be because it really does look like he has to use the restroom I mean that's the, the pose my children make when they have to go it's the universal sign I'm pretty sure so I was trying to juggle and get this out of there and Dagny took the camera for me so I could get a good grip on it. You can see there, it is very interesting. I believe it's Lucite. I suspect it's Lucite and it is signed on the bottom. It was a mold of some sort and I've never seen anything like it. And I don't know if I'll ever see anything like it ever again until I go back to that shop and then I might see it there again. But this was just a very interesting piece. I just... I buy weird stuff, but I just wasn't really feeling the clown. So I did, I did leave him there. And that's me um, <laughs> showing what my children do when they have to go potty. <laughs> this back here looked to be Costa Boda. And uh, it, I think it was only $6, and so I did decide to buy this. I think you just put a little tea light in there. And this guy, yikes. This lamp is amazing, and this is actually made, it's a reproduction of a Tiffany lamp. Absolutely stunning. I mean, I wouldn't mind having that reproduction in my house. I bet it looks gorgeous when it's lit, but it was absolutely stunning. You can see the cord there is, is nice. It's ready to be plugged in and ready to go. And there's the owl with the googly eyes. 
you know I am a fan of the googly eyes and especially when they're attached to an owl and so Dagny gave it a good little shake to make sure the googly eyes were functional and they are they were functional um, and I did buy the owl for $16 because I don't have one with googly eyes and now I do This hat was neat. I like that. It's older than a lot of the hats that we see around, especially that we see at Goodwill from time to time. There was a pottery lamp, and I, I liked the aesthetic of it. It was very simple. It was pottery. It, it's a good mid-century modern style lamp in its simplicity, and so I liked it, and I decided to buy it. It just needs a fiberglass shade, really. Well, I am going to split this video into two parts, and so I'm going to end it right here, and we will pick up tomorrow where we left off. I hope you guys enjoyed this first half of the video, uh, but before I do end this, I wanted to remind all of you that I am running a shirt campaign, The Missing Lid Conspiracy. Um, it is my theory on where all the lids go. So I will include a link for that down in the description. I'm running it through bonfire.com. The campaign ends on April 26th, 2020. And after that, the shirts are no more. <laughs> but they will all ship out a week later. That's when all the shirts ship. They ship in bulk. Um, so if you guys are interested in a shirt, I will include a link down below in the description. And on that note, I will see all of you tomorrow for part two of this video. And I hope you're looking forward to it. All right, bye. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you spotted something you just can't live without, we do post 25 to 30 new items in our eBay shop every single day. And I've posted a link to that down in the description.